is Majo John Madden from Victoria, Ciudad Victoria, Tamaulipas State, Mexico, uh, about two in the afternoon. Uh, I just walked into a time warp for two reasons. One is I got a, I, I looked at Facebook, which I never do, and my friend Tom had put up a memory of the peace concert uh, we did at Jubilee about seven years ago with uh, the woman who goes by the name of the Peace Troubadour. Uh, I'll think of her name. I love her. She's amazing. And she was headlining it. And uh, and she, the people who put it on recruited me to write a poem about peace for it. So it was very evocative. It was a spectacular night and brought up a lot of memories for me. I have to remember that woman's name because her music is really gorgeous. You're going to want to check her out on Spotify. Uh, and I've had a, maybe, maybe it's because I've had a crush on her that I can't bring up her name. I don't know. Uh, so, uh, so that put me into a time warp. And then also I have been stuck in Victoria here for over six weeks now, and I never intended to be here this long, but my car broke down. It took over a month to get my car out of the shop. Then I didn't have any money to put gas in the car and go anywhere, but then last Friday I got my check, but I just can't get access to the money because my PayPal card doesn't work, and I can't get a Mexican bank account without being a Mexican citizen. Oh my God, it's been such a mess. and. A couple hours ago, it looked like it was all fixed. Uh, I was laundering the money. I sent it to my buddy Lee in Arizona, who we know each other from Chicago. He was going to send it to my mechanic, to whom I owe $600 still, by Western Union. And he had already sent $50 to them once by Western Union, and there was no problem. And it went through. I, I was so excited. I, I washed part of the wind of my windshield because I've been parked behind the hotel here for a bunch of days. And uh, then he got a message that was going to be two days and 18 hours or some crazy stuff like that before the money would be available. And none of us knows why that happened. It should have been available like immediately. So suddenly I've got two, two days and 18 hours to stay pitiably poor just totally for nothing, like uh, 30 cents in pesos. Uh, and with time on my hands. So, the next thing that happened was that I somehow was sending a Facebook message, no, not a Facebook message, an email, and saw my email... Uh, signature which I apparently wrote like a year and a half ago and it's a ridiculously long signature and I thought I'm gonna read that into a video because that's a time capsule this is where I was at then and it was me attempting to summarize my trip uh, a year and a half ago about a year and a half into being on the road so I'm gonna read that and uh, I haven't read it for a long, long time, so I don't even know if it's going to be interesting. I've got it in my other phone. I'm setting it up here where I can look at it. And we will together discover if it's interesting at all. Holy shit! <laughs> I can't get it. Huh? Okay, hold on, hold on. See, this is, this is live theater. <laughs> this is the, the risk of improvisation. And you can feel free to get... No, I, I'm here. I'm here. On here, and it says here that I wrote it on two thirteen twenty two, but the, I did take a glimpse of it, and it looked like I had uh, written it uh, from Chicago, which was earlier than that. So let's see what we got. Oh, on oh on two thirteen twenty two, I added a note. This long signature, written in November when I was in Chicago, is now somewhat obsolete. Skip reading all these words. Listen to me read to you an updated version of all of this. This link goes to a 10-minute audio, a chunk of your time, but a good investment. It will leave you knowing a lot more about what got me to this moment in my life. Well, I will eventually uh, 
listen to that audio. But I'm way more into video these days. I'm finding audio kind of boring. Except that you can listen to it while you're walking the dog and stuff. And you don't have to look. I'll, I'll listen to that later. Uh, but I, I'm interested in the time capsule of uh, what I was writing in November. And I say as my like title under the signature. Survivor of 30 years of psychiatric misdiagnosis. And crusader to reign in the out-of-control psychiatric industry. That's still true. I still hold myself that way. The Buddha's first principle is that life is suffering. I assert that trauma is a universal human challenge, not a psychiatric condition. And that still organizes the way I think about the psychiatric industry. And I give my Facebook and Instagram links. Don't use those. Really, give my Twitter. No, don't use that. Uh, my blog, Healing Validations, is still interesting, but uh, nothing. I've added nothing for uh, almost two years, and the video links are all busted on it uh, because I did not know for a long time that iCloud links only last for a month. <laughs> They, they ought to tell you that. There ought to be something that pops up and says, by the way, this is going to expire in a month. Uh, so here's, huh, here's, what, here's what I had to say. After leaving Asheville, North Carolina for the high mountains of western North Carolina, I and my trusty little chihuahua sidekick Panchita expired uh, a little over, just, yeah, a little over a year ago. Uh, Spent the next year as Majo and Pancho, two outlaw cowboys running the back roads of Appalachia during the pandemic. And when people have told me that's too many words for the title of anything, I have shortened it to the legend of Majo and Pancho. We spent the summer of 2021 in the oppressively hot and oppressively southern city of Louisville, Kentucky reaching out to my son and working with the Black Lives Matter group there to dispel white paranoia about how dangerous Louisville's black population is and to bring about justice for Louisville's sweetheart and martyr, Brianna Taylor. Since October 6th, we have been basking in my, uh, we have been in my hometown, Chicago, basking in the gritty realness and natural friendliness of working class Chicagoans. I did love that. Licking our wounds from the summer because they've been such an awful summer in Louisville. Reconnecting with fabulous friends who knew me before 2004 when I moved to Asheville and figuring out what comes next. My vision is to eventually settle somewhere in the Southwest. No, no, that has evolved. That's a long, long-standing vision of mine. I was going to go to New Mexico, etc. Uh, and at this point, I was going to do it because of Pancho and I had gotten allergic to the Blue Ridge Mountains. But it, it morphed to I got to have I got to have a sleepy little beach community in uh, in Mexico, and I actually am in Mexico now, so that's pretty amazing. Uh, Okay, uh, but we are drinking deeply of my fabulous hometown Chicago, my favorite old neighborhood Rogers Park. If you're into Chicago, and I just who do? Oh, Katie Fountain, my friend, uh, just moved to Chicago. Apparently, I, I need to. It's probably too late to suggest what neighborhood she should live in, but she can spend time in Rogers Park. That and it's the Chicago neighborhood farthest to the north along the lake before you go into Evanston. Uh and we're also drinking deeply of the great being that is Lake Michigan and the gorgeous Loyola Beach, named for my alma mater just a mile south. So I, in our six weeks in Chicago, we spent almost every night parked in the parking lot right next to the apartment I used to live in, in Rogers Park, which was exactly at the north end of the big mile-long Loyola Beach. So the, the beach was just outside my windows and I had a balcony overlooking it. Yeah. Uh, my Chicago girlfriend christened Lake Michigan Mama 
And Lo Loyola Beach, La Playa del Juan. She had just returned from La Playa del Carmen. And we're headed for, not specifically La Playa del Carmen, but uh, the end of the Yucatan Peninsula. They call it the Mayan Riviera. And there's many resorts and other non-resort places to explore out there. First, we were going to be here in Chicago through October. After a week here, and I'd gotten there, I'd gotten there like October 7. After a week here, I pushed our departure back to December 3rd. We actually left earlier than that. Because well, it got cold. I was like, guess what? <laughs> At the end of the fall, fall tends to be glorious in Chicago, but guess what follows it? Uh, but at this point, on I guess October 22, I'm saying that still is feeling too short a time to see everyone I want to see, and it was too short a time. Experience all I want to experience and to learn everything that Mama is trying to teach me because I was parked right on Lake Michigan, that great beam. After almost nonstop travel since the COVID hit, and I left Asheville on March 28th of 2020. Uh, Chicago seems to be telling me to slow down and get more grounded, absolutely. But we can't ride out a Chicago winter living in Narwhal the Whale, our 88 Ford Econoline camper van, much as we love her. She'll become significantly less cozy in the winter, big time, except she didn't make it that far. That's interesting. When I wrote this, it was still Narwhal the Whale my 88 Ford Econoline, and sometime in November, I guess maybe early November in Chicago, Narwhal went belly up, just unrepairable, and uh, we had like three hours to get our stuff out of it before it was going to be sent to the junkyard to be crunched. Uh, and we had, we're like on this, friends kept us from being on the street, but we were in like Airbnbs and stuff for about I think 10 days before we bought our new van. Uh, what are we to do? I have some ideas and that's always a dangerous thing. Stay tuned. Yeah. At one point I had said there that I was gonna stay there for the whole winter, for a year, for a year. I'm gonna spend a year in Chicago because I was so madly in love with my hometown. Uh, and I even looked, uh, my friend Lisa Childs came up from the South Side and we went into my old building and looked at an apartment in that wonderful old building that has never been improved in like 50 years, I don't know, 40, 50 years. Classy, classy old Chicago apartment building. And, uh, with, and I, I looked at an apartment with uh, a balcony overlooking the lake. But uh, I was blown smoke to think I could afford Chicago rents, even in that even that neighborhood which had been cheap for chicago because when i was there 20 years ago the word on the street still was that it was dangerous in that neighborhood so the rents hadn't gone up but they have gone up and the other thing that's happened now the son of my old landlord said to me hey your name's golden here you always were good with your rent but it, it, these days those big complexes are all managed by big firms that do that for a living and they require proof of you having enough income. And I never would have, I never would have passed that. So I, I gave up on that. But then it would have been crazy to stay there in the winter. I'd been very unhappy. Instead, I went south. And by December 23rd, I was in New Orleans and spent the winter in New Orleans, which was much better than being in Chicago for the winter. Okay.